the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole world with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory
Before you're seated, come on and um, greet the na- your neighbors right now. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. You know, Jesus is our ultimate Valentine, isn't he? Amen. He's the lover of our soul. So thank you all for being here tonight to worship God and and to celebrate Valentine's Day with Jesus. Amen. Let's have the ushers come forward and prepare to receive our tithes and offerings this evening. 
while you're getting that ready. If you need an envelope, there should be one in the, in the pocket in front of your seat. If there's not one there and you need an envelope, please raise your hand and the ushers will bring one to you. Just to let you know that Pastor Gus is still ministering in Greece. He will be back this Tuesday night. So you want to be here to support him coming back, welcome him back, and just hear the praise reports from his trip in Greece. Amen? Amen. So make sure that you're here. Um, also, we have men's and women's Bible studies every Wednesday at 6.30. Uh, the men are meeting in the youth building. And men, you're starting a brand new study. It's called SOAR. Are you ready to accept God's power? So it's going to be an awesome study. So I want to just encourage you. Pastor Tom is teaching it uh, to show up Wednesday night. The women, we are studying Undaunted and by Christine Kane, and it's been great. So if you haven't come yet, and you can still come any Wednesday night. You don't have to have been there from the very beginning. Every week is a different subject, and there's always something you can get out of it. And we're meeting in the kitchen uh, Wednesday at 630. We're going to have water baptism on Saturday, February 28th. So if you've not been water baptized and you've been recently saved or you've recently come to the church and you realize that you need to be water baptized, it's like the next step after salvation, publicly proclaiming and testifying that you've been saved, that you've been buried with Christ, you've risen with him, and to new life. Amen? So if you want to make that declaration, please sign up in the bookstore and... Um, if you're planning on coming that night, bring a towel, uh, bring a change of clothes, and bring a plastic bag to put your wet clothes in when you're finished, okay? Also, if you attended the New Believers Get Connected class a couple of weeks ago on Sunday after church, um, the certificates are in the bookstore if you want to pick up your certificate there. And then this Friday night is our monthly Women Reaching Women meeting. So ladies, I want to invite all of you to come out. Friday night at 6.30, I believe we're, we're celebrating Valentine's Day, and our theme this month is Crazy Love. And uh, we're having an Italian dinner. Romantic, right? Italian is the most romantic dinner you can have. So we want to invite you to all come and bring a friend, bring somebody you work with, a neighbor, um, a family member, and uh, we want to just pack this place out. We have a lot of fun, but we also worship God together and, and hear the word. And people get saved and delivered every time that we are together. So please bring somebody with you on Friday night. Also, um, we are participating in the 40 Days for Life campaign again. Uh, it's beginning February 18th through March 29th. How many of you participated last year? And this is the fight to end abortion, if you haven't heard of it before. But I want to encourage all of you, um, there is a list in the bookstore of days and times that Fire and Water will be at the um, abortion site. And we're asking people to come out and join us. And basically, all you're doing is praying. There's no, you're not talking to anybody. You're just out there to pray. We're not out there to, to make a scene. It's, it's a very quiet um, time of, of just praying and agreeing together as the, as the cars drive in. People come in to get abortions. We're praying that God would change their hearts and their minds before they even get up to the room. Um, we're praying that even when they're in the room that, that they just have second thoughts and, and they leave and they, they can't go through with it. So it's a very important um, campaign and we want everyone to participate. I know the men even participated last year and Pastor Tom's going to be, be recruiting some men again to um, come out. And so it's, it's 40 days for life. It's a worldwide prayer and fasting effort to end abortion. If you can't come out to the site, you can pray at home. You can fast at home. But do something within this next 40 days. Um, like I said, there's a flyer in the bookstore, and we are going as a group uh, every time that we go, and that's for um, protection, for our own protection. And the meeting place is also on the flyer, and um, there's also a list of things that you can pray for during this campaign time. So please, I would encourage all of you to get involved. If, if you have any more questions, you can see uh, Cindy Ferreira, and um, I believe her email address is also on the flyer, so you can get in touch with her. Okay, how many are going to attend the 40 Days for Life at least once during this? Praise God, please. Um, how many are here for the first time tonight? It's your first time at Fire and Water. Anybody? All right, welcome. Thanks for coming. If you want to stop by the bookstore on your way out, we have a gift for you tonight. 
and we'd love to find out um, how you heard about the church. If you don't have a home church, we have services on Tuesday, Saturday at 7, and Sundays at 1030, and we'd love to have you come back and join us again. So welcome. Isaac, do you want to come pray for the offering? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you gave us that we could be in your house, Lord. Yes, Lord, we just want to thank you right now, Lord, for all the goodness that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. You had been a merciful God. You had been a kind God. Oh, you have been a forgiving God, and you have been a loving God, Lord. And we just want to pay back uh, in our own little way, Lord, whatever you have bestowed us in our finances also, Lord, so that your work may go through this world, Lord, that your work may continue, that souls may be added to your kingdom glory, Lord. Bless each and everyone who is about to put into the basket, Lord. Oh, bless them, Lord. Multiply their, their finances, Lord. And the, especially the people who are unable to do it today, Lord, in the days to come. Use them mightily that they may also be able to pour into your buckets, Lord. Yes, Lord, a special anointing on the word of God that we are about to hear from you, Lord. Oh, let the anointing rest upon her. And we are thankful for our pastor also, Lord, that he had gone out and he's about to be back amongst us, Lord. Oh, with all the good reports that he has with him, Lord. Bless him, Lord, and, and bring him safe and secure back home. Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Would you just remain seated until the offering is taken?
is a land Amen Hallelujah
a holy habitation. Make us a holy habitation. Oh, for your glory, Lord. Oh, for your glory. You have won. 
Spirit just to come all over. Right now, I just want to pray. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, rain down your fire tonight, Lord. Rain down the Holy Spirit right now. Rain it down, Lord. Rain the Holy Spirit right down and usher into this place and touch the hearts of your people tonight, Lord. Right now, Father. Father, use me. I'm just nothing but a vessel, Lord, and speak your word through me, Lord. Speak it, Lord. Right now, Lord, Holy Spirit, rain down your fire right now on your people. Right now, Lord. Father, we give you all the praise and glory and honor, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now, just open up their minds. Just let the word fall on good soil tonight on their hearts, Lord. Right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <sighs> well, tonight. I'm going to talk about something that's going to really um, hit home. It's going to really hit home. Um, the title of my message tonight is Reality Check. Reality Check. And, you know, God gave me this word a while ago, and it was funny because I was going to do it with the men, because we had our thing last night, and I was asking God, God, I need a word. I need a word for the men. I need something, something. It's getting close. And I heard something on the radio, and, and it just touched my heart of um, this scripture. And it was about the prostitute when they were ready to stone her. When Jesus said, the first one who would out sin cast the first stone. And it just like, wow, all right, Lord. Judge. So yesterday I spoke about judge not. About judging, judging people, how we always had that tendency. But Lord put this one, he says, no, I want, I want you to do this. You know, it's funny how he, sometimes I get in the way and I go, oh, Lord, this is what I want to do. I want, I want to do this because I know this really well. I, this is what I want to do. And when I think about it and, and start really putting it together, my, the thoughts and words and everything is just clouding my mind. So now it's telling me that I'm getting in the way. God has something else and better planned. Amen. So, okay, now I have to sit back because really it's not about me. It's about him. He's just using me right now. That's all. But when this came into play, it, it, was just, it just flowed. So when I was writing, it just, everything's flowed out. So I know it was of God. So, reality check. Let me give you a definition of what reality is. It's not the way we wish things to be, nor the way they appear, but the way things actually are. Yes. Ouch. Okay? We live in a reality world, reality, and then there's the fantasy world that we live in. Now... Being a person of God means whose character is really centered on reality, our character. Are we focused on reality or we're focused on something else? And what else are we focused on? Well, appearances, perception, rationalization, 
deceits, and fantasies. I mean, fantasies. Like, Lord, if I just win the lottery, you know, and that's $50 million, oh, I can buy this, and my life will be great, and all this, and all that. Okay, that's fantasy world. But, you know, people find comfort in that. It's like living in a bubble. You feel comfortable. You, you, you're escaping reality. You're not really looking at what the world is about or what God's about. You're just in this bubble, and it's an escape. We escape with drugs. We escape with alcohol and other things. But fantasy and living a lie or living a make-believe world, that's another way of the enemy twisting your mind getting it focused off of God and onto your own crazy thoughts. Christ-likeness is measured by a consistent acceptance of reality, especially when it hurts. So what do I mean by that? See, God gives us grace. We don't deserve it, but it's grace. We're sinners, but he gives us grace. It's like a real big hug. That's God's love, and that's his grace. But God also gives us something else. He gives us truth. Okay? And truth is slap on the back of the head. And you wouldn't believe how many times I got slapped on the back of my head. Even now, my wife sometimes slaps me upside the head. Okay? I'm not kidding. Truth. This is what, you know, God gives us that, but then he also gives us truth. And truth that we don't want to face the reality of what God's trying to tell us. What he wants to give us. We hear from God, and we know it's from God. We know we shouldn't be doing the things that we're doing. He's telling us that's reality, and then we go escape into something else. And sometimes we put that facade of our appearances or the way we look, the way we talk, the way we act, the way we walk through this door. We want people to recognize us as, look who we am. Look who I am. I'm all this in a bag of chips. Really? Is that reality? Is that... But then yet we're Christians and what we play around like that. One moment, yeah, I'm praising God. The next minute, I'm playing a game. And when you play that game, and when you play that game, God will reveal that to you. Or if not, if you continue to play that game, you look for people to play with you. And you kind of feel comfortable with your surroundings. You know, sometimes we're not a, really want to accept the brutal facts, what's surrounding it. It has to do with lust, fantasy. It's a lasting impact on relationships that we have. See, it's an emotional thing that we go through. Fear, pride, denial, neglect, things like that. Even though we say we're Christians, things like that hurt God. Hurt him in a big way. You know, you're not fooling anybody. You're only fooling yourself. See, God knows the secrets of what goes on and what you're doing. God knows that. Now, you put that facade on that you think, nobody's going to know this or what my little secret is. Nobody. But God does. But it's amazing how we block that part out of our minds and let not, you know, we think that God doesn't know what's going on. He can't see me. He sees all. He knows what you're going to do tomorrow, next week, next year. He already has your life planned out for you. It's the choice that you make and the way you're going to go and what direction you have. When you say yes to him, he's got your life all set up. He has the vision that he has for you. The problem is, sometimes with reality, 
we go the wrong way. And when we do that, we get lost. You know, how many remember that show, Fantasy Island? Uh, it shows you how old I am, huh? <laughs> Look at all the people raised your hands. Remember that? Fantasy Island? Okay, is that reality? Is that? No, that's not. But we play that. As Christians, we still play that. We don't want to accept God's truth when it hit, psh, hits us upside the head. And when it hits us upside the head, it's like, now you got two choices to do. Am I going to go the way God straightened me out, or I'm going to still go run my path? And when I run my path, and you, and you come up here day in and day out, you come to church, and you come right up on these altars, and you pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. But meanwhile, your reality check, where are you at? Where are you at? Again, we're not fooling. You can fool some of the people, some of the time, and all of the people all of the time. But you can't fool God. God sees right through you. John, chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. God's light streamed into the world... But men and women everywhere ran from the darkness. They went from the darkness because they were not really interested in pleasing God. Everyone who makes a practice of doing evil, addicted to denial and illusions, that's a reality check, hates God's light and won't come near it, fearing a painful, truthful, I threw that in, Exposure. That's the word right there. But anyone working and living in truth and reality welcomes God's light so that work can be seen for the work, for God's work it is. That's a teachable spirit. See, God will shine his light in your heart and reveal the darkness to you. Which way are you going to go? Are you going to run? Or are you going to say, Lord, okay, hit me upside the head. I got a teachable spirit. Show me. I know last week in the men's Bible class, when I said, hey, who can tell me what a teachable spirit is? Everybody was like, they were shooting left and right, left and right. Somebody who's open, humble. Somebody who'll take criticism and look at it as constructive criticism so I can move on for God's glory. Instead of being defensive and holding back and then all of a sudden feeling rejected and unloved because of what this person said to me. See, there's a way of saying things to people. I used to have that problem. I used to say something and it always came out the wrong way. Can you imagine that? See, that was the old me. I used to say things, and I meant it one way, and it came out the other way, but I was like hard, direct, but I was like, and even now, sometimes my wife tells me, yeah, you know what you just said? Yeah, I know what I said. Yeah, but it didn't sound like that. Oh, yes, it did. No, it didn't. Do you know what's going on? Hello. Let me tell you, anybody who keeps me in check is my wife right there. I thank her because there's times... I'll give you for instance, she used to tell me every time I'm up here and I drink water, I used to squeeze the bottle and it echoes in here and it drives everybody's, so you're going to knock that off? I said, okay, so notice how I put this over here and I drank the water. But no, she would keep me in line to a point like I would hear that, Tom, Tom, and I would, I'd snap out of it because I would just, I was focused going this direction. What are you doing? Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Oh, yeah. So the next time when the, the guy cuts you off, be nice about it. Sorry? We all have that. A teachable spirit. That's what God wants. God shines his light in us. See, the light of Christ shines into secret places and exposed the reality in our lives, the gaps he would like to help fill us. 
A full exposure to his light in our lives is the bright kind, leaving no corner unilluminated and leaving us exposed morally, emotionally, and spiritually. A teachable spirit. When God exposes that stuff on us, we're a teachable spirit. We could conquer this through the blood of Christ. We can beat this reality thing and get on what's really real and what's going on instead of living in a fantasy world. And a lot of people, and I tell you, I'll be honest with you, you know, way back when, I used to live in a world like that. I used to live in a bubble. When things were going crazy with the family, my first late wife, things were going out of control. I felt comfort in that bubble. Every, all hills breaking loose around me, and I feel secure, happy. Everything's no problem. The moment I woke up and looked outside, I was like, holy cow, I'm going to go back in here. That's where that was my, I wasn't into drugs or alcohol at the time. It was this. This is just as worse as drugs and alcohol. Because, one, I'm not hearing from God. And I'm totally destroying everything. But meanwhile, I'm thinking everything is good. I'm getting up, going to work, coming home, eating, going to bed. It was just a routine. And all hell around me was breaking loose. Until I married a, my wife, and then she would psh, slap me upside the head. <laughs> and say, hello, you going to wake up? So tonight, we got to examine, you know, the things, the authentic relationships we have, the areas in our life that you're tempted to put a mask and adjust, and adjust your perceived image. That's tonight. I pray that the Holy Spirit reveals that tonight. See, Jesus was big on reality. He was extremely big on reality. You know, I met a lot of people that would, you know, you would hear a lot of people that have, it would be so easy for them to just lie so naturally. Or they cover up so naturally. Or they don't want people to be mad at me. And I want to be accepted. I want people to make me feel good. I don't want to hurt others. You're destroying your character when you act like that. That's not reality. That's not the real you. That's not what God had for you. That wasn't it. But you're trying to be a people pleaser, a people person. I want to be liked. So what do I got to do to be liked? So if it means I got to go rob a store so I can fit in with the boys, I'll do that just to be liked. Sell drugs or do whatever it takes. Tonight, there are 11 scriptures, 11 of them, shows how Jesus taught that we should be integrated reality, integrate reality into our life. There's 11 of them. And I'm not going to really, I'm just going to hit it, PowerPoint, but I'll throw a couple of things in there. But let's start with number one, Mark 9.43. Reality and temptation. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter life maim than with two hands to go into hell. The hard truth, amputate the sin like cancer. Be ruthless. Don't, don't let it come back. Don't let it fester. Eventually, it would kill you. Cut it off. Do whatever it takes to avoid that. You hear Pastor Gus up here many a times. He got that phone number. Delete it. Change your number. Don't go down that street. Don't pass that place. 
block block everything on your computer and TV if if that's the cause. Worst case, throw the computer out. Whatever it takes, cut it off. Don't live in that real that fantasy that you can beat this with willpower. Because believe me, you're not going to beat it with willpower. Willpower ain't going to work. Okay? Willpower will last a little while, but if you don't have help from the King of Kings and the Lord of Law, you ain't going to beat it. Number two. Luke 4. Excuse me. Luke chapter 6 verse 46. Reality and God's commands. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? The hard truth, spiritual actions speak far louder than the words. They are the ultimate marker of spiritual integrity. If you love someone, you will seek alignment of your life to their priorities. If you love God, you will seek what his word, what his book, what his manual says to do. Period. Deviate from the plan, you're living in fantasy world. You're back on fantasy island again. Bottom line. Number three, Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. Reality and spiritual deception. You have heard it that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And women, that goes for you too. Okay? It's a two-way street. All right? Because I know women just as bad as men. See, women have, they give women a name, which I'm not going to say. But men, we have a different name. And it's a right? You guys will know what I'm talking about. The hard truth, thoughts, motives, intentions reveal who we really are, and behaviors only confirm it. The tip of the iceberg is what people see. The mass below the waterline is what God sees. See, we want people to see who we are, so we're going to act a certain way, and that's what we're going to do. But in reality, God sees it down here, who you really are. Again, you're not kidding nobody. Because there'll come a time. Because don't forget, God only gives you today, not tomorrow. Only today. And your life can change. My life changed like that, too. Just like that. That I don't want to get into, but it did. Just like that. You see people go through everything, just like that. Rick and Lupe, their lives changed just like that. That's how quick. Are we willing to play Russian roulette with God on something as something as so simple to overcome, but we get so lost in it? One, two, three. Number four. John chapter 16, verse 33. Reality and expectations. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. He overcame this world. He's our role model. The hard truth, earth is not heaven. We should expect loss and grief, yet we should anticipate God's redeeming our grief and fulfilling his purpose in it. Through full redemption from suffering may not come in this lifetime. Earth's worst cannot escape God's best. Bottom line, trust God with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. 
Yes, there will be grief. Yes, there will be loss. Yes, tragic death. Things happen. He says it. He's told us. But then yet we still go, why, God, why are you doing this to me? You know, it's funny. When I just said that, I said that to God one time. One time. Because I know better never to say that to him. But I said it one time to him through what I was going through. I was doing 100 miles an hour on I-10 trying to get to a hospital at 2 in the morning. And I go, why, God, are you doing this? And he turned around and he said to me, as clear as day, why not? I sent my son, didn't I? And then he reminded me of Paul and Silas. And I was like, oh, okay. And the next thing he said to me goes, you need to praise me. While I'm doing, I'm trying to beat the helicopter to the hospital, and I'm flying. And this is all taking place. And I have no clue how I went from A to B. No clue. All I remember was, how many remember when they used to have the speeding lights on the highway and the red lights? All I remember was seeing red lights flashing. I don't know why. I was in the middle lane. It was, seemed like there wasn't a car on the road. But the peace of the Holy Spirit just came all over me. See, because I had a choice to make. I can start crying and weeping and yelling and screaming, or I can stop praising God. But see, I knew what God what he's done for me. So I started singing praises to him. And that's when the peace of the Holy Spirit came over that car and over me. And it, I didn't even know how fast. All I knew was I looked down, it said 100, and red lights were flashing, and I was still moving. And now one cop, nobody stopped me too, until I got to the hospital. You have a choice to make. A choice. That's why God gives us a free will and choice. At that moment, I could have started doing the mind games in my mind and started messing everything up. I could have totally blew it right then and there and not trusted God. If you, whenever that opportunity happens, trust God. He's got you back. The worst will happen first, but believe me, it's unbelievable what he has for you on this side once you get through it all. I'm losing count. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Matthew 15, chapter 15, verse 7 and 8. Reality and spiritual practice. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Hard truth, the motions might be right, but if the motivations are out of alignment, you might as well drop the charade. Playing church is playing with fire. Six, right. John, chapter 11, verse 33 through 35. Reality and loss. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. The hard truth, we are made to feel pain not to brush it off as someone else's misery. Jesus didn't deny or try to fix the real loss of others in the moment. He experienced and connected with it. Anything less is out of touch with reality. Like I said, we will feel pain, we will feel hurt, we will feel lost. We will. But how are you going to handle it? What are you going to do about it? When the rubber hits the road, what are you going to do about it? You always hear other things with other people, and you can always say, that's not going to happen to me. That can never happen to me. 
Now, this is funny. I said the same thing. I'm not saying it's going to happen. It can. But I'm saying, are you prepared and ready if it does? What avenue are you going to take? What are you going to do? Are you going to live in a fantasy world? Are you going to blame others for it? Are you going to live in fear and hurt and be hurtful and prideful? Or are you going to trust God and give it to him? Are you going to trust him? <laughs> are you going to trust him? That's the choice you have to make. Jesus trusted his father in everything. He did his work no matter what. Even when he was going to the cross, he had that human moment. If you can take this cup from me, but Lord, if it's of your will, I'll do it. That's a servant. And that's what we have to be like. Through thick or thin. That's why Jesus wept. God wept himself. You know, it is, I think there's, that's, Jesus wept, yeah. That's one of the shortest verses in the Bible. He felt our pain. He feels our pain. When he sees us cry and, and weep over a loss, he feels it. He's been there. He walked in our shoes. Everything we go through, he's done. Everything. Everything. You want comfort? Just go to the book, and it'll tell you. But everything. That's why he can says, don't check out. Don't lose your mind. I'm here for you. Wow, oh, I lost count. Seven. Seven. Cool. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Reality and emotional isolation. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Hard truth, there is no such thing as an emotionally satisfied self-sufficiency. I'll say that again. There is no such thing as emotionally satisfied self-sufficiency. There is only one with un unlimited emotional resources, and you are not him. It's Jesus. But we try to. We try every which way. We give up. We go back to what the enemy is like breathing down our necks. Constantly, just waiting, waiting to just pop up and say, come on, don't you remember when you were in pain? What did you used to do? How much alcohol did you drink? How much drugs did you do? Where did you check out? That's where he wants us. That's where the enemy wants us, right there. God's right here. The enemy's right here. This is where he messes us up. The moment we start to contemplate and think and rationalize that's outside of reality and start to believe and start to fantasize, he's got us. He's got us right where he wants us. But God says, no, 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 no. Come to me. If you're tired and weary, it's like that thing with the footprints. When everything's good, and you always see two footprints walking, you and Jesus. But the moment trouble strikes, we forget. Lord, where are you? Where are you? You know what? He's carrying you, and you don't even know it. We need to. The reason why we don't know it, because we checked out already. We don't have that reality of knowing that God's carrying us. He said he would. Do we believe him? No. Because if we did, then we would feel comfort. We would be at peace knowing that God's got it under control. Even though hell is breaking loose. Even though my life was going through hell. I can still pour to God and he would still give me a word to get me through that day and talk to me, and would feel his love, the peace, and just get me through. 
And the next thing I know, he was just flowing through me. It's funny. What I had to go through, I finally got what unconditional love was. See, unconditional love is not what we can do. It's God's love that pours through you. That's something I never had. I didn't even know what it was. But when God, just unconditionally. Now, who's reaping the benefits? My wife. Really? It's amazing that I had to go through a tragedy to understand what unconditional love was. You know, we were all called to go home, okay? When God says it's time to go home, no matter what you're doing, what your work is, how good of a labor you are, whatever the case may be, when God wants to call you home because of who you are, he's calling you home. Yeah, we suffer here. It's a, a yeah, Jesus mourned. He wept. We're all going to weep. But you know what? We need to pick ourselves up and take a step. And then take another step. And take another step. I hear people, oh, it's been four years. My husband's dead. Oh, I haven't changed his room. The clothes are still in there. Holy cow. Get a little reality check. Wake up. He's not coming back. Move on. God wants you to move on. He's got more for you. But you know what? He won't push himself on you. He'll wait. He's got all the time in the world. He'll wait until you, like, wake up. Until you get somebody to smack you upside the head. And then all of a sudden, it's like, and next thing you know, it's 15 years later. There's people I know that are still going through that. It's a shame, but it is. And they're Christians. Eight? Eight? Okay, good. Reality and persecution. John 15, 20. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they would also persecute you. Our truth, a relationship with Christ involves suffering. You know, it's funny. I wish they would have told me that way in the beginning. You know, you, you learn that as it goes along, you know. And it's funny, you know, I told the men, it was a couple of weeks ago, I look back at my life, what I went through, into where I am today, and I think if I had that snapshot, even though what I went through, I wouldn't give it up. I would say, Lord, let's still do it. Let's still do it because you know what? I wouldn't be standing up here today. I wouldn't be married to that woman. I wouldn't be running that Bible class. I wouldn't be doing the things I'm doing if I didn't. If that time in the car, I had a choice to make, and if I would have turned around and said, Screw you, God. I'm doing it my way. He would have took, as a gentleman, he would have said, no problem. He would have gotten in the back seat. See, I belong in the back seat, and he should have been driving. That's the choice. I made that choice right away. I wasn't going to let the enemy take me down. Again, because I remembered what God has done for me before and before and before and before. See, that's the problem. We forget what God has done for us before. We forget when God, I was looking at 30 years and there was favor and the judge released me and dropped the charges. Or when I was strung out on dope and God, like that, no more withdrawals, no nothing. I was cured. God's power. Or when alcohol, for how many years? And then I would take it, and it tasted like vinegar, and threw it down, and my body is clean and healthy. See, that's God. That's what God can do. Or we can check out. Number nine, Luke chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. Reality and dysfunction. 
Martha, Martha, the Lord said, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Her, excuse me. The hard truth, he accepts us. Now listen now. He accepts us as we are, but loves us too much to leave us the way we are. Man, that's awkward. But see, that's a necessarily part of reality. Loving someone to health. He loves us too much to leave us the way we are. He wants us to get it right. He wants to change us. This is, this, this is his desire. This is what he has for us. We don't. Or we get in the way, or we can be afraid, or fearful. Or, oh man, the pain that I'm going to go through if I do this. Or the rejection I'm going to feel when I tell these people what I, or who I believe in now, and what I got to do. And now I don't have these friends anymore because I changed my way. Isn't that the first one I talked about? You know? You know, if you sin, cut your hand off. Same thing. This is what, but we got a choice. Do you want to go that way? Or do you want to go with what God's got for you? It's not going to be easy. Nothing, if, you know, what's the saying? If it's too easy, it can't be true, right? But you know what? How many people get sucked into that? You know? If that's the case, I got a bridge I want to sell you. You hear that? That's the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> Every day. But that's not reality. We want to believe it to be. We have to focus on what God wants us to do. Number 10. John chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Reality and secrets. Ooh, that's tough. Reality and secrets. Reality and secrets. Boy, have we have secrets. See, back in, where is it? John chapter 3, 19 through 21. This is where God's light's going to shine now. In the darkness, in the things that we do, in the things that we don't like anybody to see, but God's revealing it to us. We've got to get reality and realize you know, do I want to stop playing the game or do I want to get on board? This church right now, the word was spoken, multiplied by two for the coming year. There's things that have to be removed and done, washed, gone, gone. You know, when you go, and I tell the guys this all the time, when you're in a situation and God puts you in something and you're going through like you're losing your mind and you can't understand why this is going on. Well, God's revealing something in you that he wants to remove. Okay? He wants it taken out. Like gold when it's rough and they burn it to where they want to make it pure and, and, and all the garbage and junk and they want to just wipe it clean. They want to refine it. See, that's what God wants to do with us. So when you're going through something, don't look it at, and I tell the guys this all the time, don't say, God, why, 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 why? Don't say why. God, what are you showing me that I have to change in my life? Even though I'm going through this, and even though I don't like what I'm, what's going on, of course, nobody likes it when it gets uncomfortable, and the truth comes out, and God's slapping you upside the head at the same time. He's hugging you and slapping you at the same time. Okay? But God is revealing something in your life that he needs to remove from you so you can take that next step. Because once you get over it and it's done and it's behind you, A, we don't look back. B, we move forward. The enemy wants you to look back. But once God delivered you from this, why are you looking back? It's done. It's over. 
But this is what he wants. This is the stuff we go through. He does this with me all the time. Lord, what are you showing me? What are you showing? What are you trying to tell me? Not why, God. Don't do the why, God. Because you might not like what he's got to say. I'm going to tell you that. Because he will come back and answer you on that one. And you're not going to like it, what he tells you. And then you got two choices, straighten up and fly right or check out. He always gives you that free will. But see, God's such a loving God, he don't care. He's like this, waiting for you. See, that's why the truth hurts. It hurts so much. It just hurts so much. But it's good. So the next time, or if even if now you're going through something, your prayer should be, Lord, show me. Tell me. Reveal it to me. Because then I know once that's done, I can move on. Because I know what you got. Because what he's got for you, and he wants to move on, it has to go, or you can't go there. And you can't do that. It's like Peter. When Peter was in the garden, when he was ready to deny Christ three times, before that, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, the enemy asked permission to sift you out. Meaning, the devil asked God, I want to mess with Peter. That's what Jesus was saying. Now, Jesus is God. He knows what's going on. See, you're getting messed with? The enemy had to ask God for permission so he could mess with you. Think about it. See, God's saying, yeah, okay, because I know his heart. I know the outcome. Eventually, if he gets it right the first time. If not, eventually, down the road, I know how it's going to. See, because God knows the outcome down here. The devil doesn't know tomorrow. The devil only knows today. The devil knows his time is running out. So when he told that to Peter, and, 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 you know, Jesus could have snapped his fingers, and it could have been a done deal for Peter. But he told Peter, pray and have faith in my father. That's all he said. And, yeah, Peter was sifted out. Three times he denied Christ. The last time he started cursing, screaming, and he ran. He ran. But you know, Peter had a pride issue. See, that had to be stripped in order to be, to have an Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Do you see? See, God knows what he's doing. We get in the way. God knows exactly the plan. See, Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That's his plan for you. He knows it. He knew Peter's heart. He knew Peter had to suffer. He knew Peter, when he got back up, that pride issue was going to be gone. Why? Because when in the Bible it talks about when Peter would walk by people that were begging to be healed, the shadow of Peter was healing the people. Come on, how many people would be prideful about that? Oh, man, look at that. God, get over it. I'll just walk right by and just my shadow. Huh? That's like Bruce Almighty. Remember? Bruce Almighty? Carry. <laughs> right? Now, you think he was prideful? See, God had to remove that because he knew what he had going on in Peter's life, what he was going to do. Not to be prideful. Not to be prideful. So when you're going through something, think about that. And you want to even go a little more? In Job chapter 2, well, Job chapter 1, verse 2, it tells you a story. God's in heaven, and Satan and his boys are flying around earth, and he flies up to heaven. And God says to Satan, hey, what are you doing? I think that's the wrong scripture. I know it's there, but I can't think off the top of my head. I'm just... But the story is, Satan was asking God, hey, well, God was asking Satan, what are you doing? He says, I'm looking around, prowling the earth, looking to something to seek and devour. And he turned around and said, hey, you notice Job? He says, yeah, I noticed Job. 
Yeah. But you know that God, you got your hand over him and I can't even touch him with a 10 foot pole. And then God turns around and says, all right, go ahead. Don't touch him, but mess everything else up. And he did. Wiped out his kids, everything he had, everything. And he says, if you do that, he'll curse you to your face, God. God said, go ahead. See, God knew Job's heart. And then the second time after he still praised God, again, the enemy went up to God and said, what about it? And God says, look at him. He's still praising you. Nah. If you let me inflict some pain on his body, that'll make him do it. Okay, go right ahead, but don't kill him. So how many of us have gone through stuff like that? Turn to God. Turn to God, no matter what. Turn to. God's got you covered. He's got you back. No matter what, he's got you back. So let me go back to reality and secrets. Sorry, I went off a little. So it says in John chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. This is the woman at the well. This is the one when Jesus told the apostles, go on, and I want to hang out here. So he's hanging out at the well. He knows what was coming. And she replied, Jesus, and she replied, excuse me, go and call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. And Jesus said to her, you are right when you have say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands, and the men you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. The hard truth? Jesus has seen the movie, every frame. Nothing is lost in translation here. Jesus knows all the facts about your dark spaces that is either terrifying or revealing. Now we don't have to pretend or hide anything. He knows. Isn't that funny? But then yet we play, we have that facade or that. We block our mind that we think that Jesus, nobody knows. He doesn't know. So I'm going to still do what I'm going to do. He knows. It's right there in the word. He knows. You trust God. You want God. There's blessings. There's something, things that are you're asking God and you're, and you're, and you're praying, but your prayers are not being answered and, and it feels like you're hitting a stone wall. Well, there's some things that need to be removed, taken care of, give it to God, let it all out, and then watch your blessings. They'll come. We're in the way. We're in the way. We don't want to let go. We like living there. You know, it's funny. God says, you know, make your yes a yes and you know you know. Don't sit on the fence. Because I hate you even more if you sit on the fence. Because you're wishy-washy. You can't make up your mind. If you're going to say no, then it's no. Then that, I respect. That. That's what God's saying. I'll respect that and this, but don't sit on the fence. So you're making me look like a fool. Be honest. And number 11. Reality and eternity. John 14, 2. In my house... My father has many rooms. If not so, I would not have told you. I'm going to prepare, prepare a place for you. That's a wonderful truth. We are never going to be separated, ever. This is the best reality. This, that is reality. That's the word of God. I have a place prepared for you right there in heaven it's got your name on the front door are you ready for that are you ready
Are you ready for that? For what Jesus has for you. So tonight, you have a choice. You have a choice to make. One, I want to do two prayers tonight. One, prayer of salvation. That if you don't know Jesus and you want to get to know him, you want to have a personal relationship with him, a one-on-one, you want to go where it says John 14 too, where it says, I have a place for you. I have many rooms in my father's house and I'm going there to prepare one for you. And the second one, This is a good time now to confess to to God that, yeah, Lord, I haven't been straight with you. I haven't been right with you. I need a reality check. I need a slap upside the head. That's what I need right now to get me back in line, to get me focused back with you, so I can move forward with you. That's what I need. But first, salvation. Is there anybody here right now who doesn't know the Lord and wants to have a personal relationship with him right now. So I just want you to raise your hand right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. The angels right now are rejoicing in heaven. But we're going to say a a prayer of salvation for you. And the second prayer tonight is you need that slap on the head. You need that reality check. You need to get right with God. You need to stop playing the game. Coming in here with that facade and think you who you are and say, Lord, forgive me. Remove it from me. I want to get right with you. I want to get back with you. I want to, I just want to be right forward with you, Lord. So you just direct direct me, Lord. So right now, would you please come forward here? And if there's anybody else, and the second prayer, you want that reality check? You want to confess it to God right now? Right now, please come up here right now and give it to God. This is between you and him between you and him. right now we're going to pray who up here needs doesn't know Jesus right now anybody okay these people up here just want a reality check they want something to put them back into line Father God, right now I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray right now, Father God. Father, renew my mind, Father God. No more playing games with you, Lord. No more lying. No more cheating. No more deceiving. No more living in that fantasy world, Lord. Right now, Lord, I'm asking for a clean heart, a clean mind. Father, I'm asking for forgiveness right now. Forgive me for the way I've been acting and what I've been doing. been right with you, Lord. Wash me with your blood. Renew a right spirit in me, Lord. I'm all yours, Father God. Right now, Lord, right now. Right now, Lord. Change my heart. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come into their hearts right now and renew them right now, Holy Spirit. Renew their mind. 
Satan, get your hands off of the children of God right now because they are covered by the blood. They are covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been washed by the blood. Death has been defeated. So, Lord, right now, we're just giving it all to you, Lord. We're giving it all to you right now, Father God. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Make me a new creation. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Renew my heart. Renew my mind. I give it all to you, Father God, right now. Right now, Lord. I give it all to you right now. Right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. We love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. Of our hearts adore. Jesus, we love.
Father God, right now I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. Bless your people, Father, as they go, Father God. Father, I thank you for the word tonight. Father, I pray that it fell on good soil tonight in the hearts. Father, I pray that you renew their minds. Holy Spirit, to renew their minds again. Renew it, refresh. I thank you, Lord, for the work you're going to be doing, Father. I pray a blessing and favor over your people tonight, Lord. Blessing and favor, Father God. Blessing and favor. Blessing and favor. Father, I pray the blood of Jesus to cover them, to keep them from evil and harm, Lord, right now. Father, traveling mercies on them again, Father, so they can come back tomorrow and praise and worship you tomorrow, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the work that you're going to be doing and the victory, the victory that we're claiming right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father, I give you all the praise and glory and honor. All the praise and glory and honor. Go ahead, give him a raise clap. Go ahead. It's all right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good night. You are dismissed.